99.5 The Hive, your home for everything Waynesburg, including the Coach's Corner, every Friday after, every Friday just before noon. I am Bobby Fox, flying solo today because, unfortunately, due to some technical problems, uh, RJ Lisey, my graduate assistant, able to take the day off. Uh, we won't have any video of this one. Also, won't have it archived for social media. So if uh, anyone would like to t- tune in, and uh, maybe they haven't gotten the message, but you know they would, certainly contact them. And we are on 99.5 The Hive, of course, on FM and also at waynesburgsports.com, the newly redesigned waynesburgsports.com. You can also find us at waynesburg.edu. But joining me today, Waynesburg University head women's soccer coach Laura Heatheis, her first appearance of the year. Coach, welcome back after being on last year, and thank you for joining us uh, this week. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been an outstanding start. Uh, for the women's soccer team they come into saturday's game at baldwin wallace got to be a big one we're going to talk about that a little more but they come in four one and two uh the only loss to muskingum back on september 12th they've come off a couple of ties in double overtime but against two quality non-conference opponents in mount aloysius and pitt greensburg this is a team in the yellow jackets of waynesburg you have not given up more than two goals in a game now a little teaser for myself and for tomorrow's football game, if anyone's going to make it, we will, ha- we will be featuring the Waynesburg University women's soccer team in the program and how they've gotten off to this solid start. But a little preview of that. Coach, defense has been strong and then backed up, of course, by junior keeper Courtney Seifert. Just your thoughts on how the team has been performing so far and how this defense has been performing. Yeah, defensively as a whole, we've been solid. Uh, I think we've taken... All the teams that have come to us and uh, played against us, they've had some really fast girls in the back. Um, Meg Brisky, a freshman for us, has been able to match that pace as, long, uh, as well as Mackenzie Schaefer, so they bring that. Um, and then in the back, we've had Leah, we've had Jess Silba a little bit, Gina Benoor a little bit, outside backs, and they're able to get up in the attack a little bit. That helps us too. Um, but solid in the back for sure. Courtney Seifer has been doing really well. Um, strong strong in, uh, in her saves, coming up big on... Uh, breakaways just with our instincts um, so we've been doing a great job with team defense um, and I'm hoping that continues going through now talking about Courtney Seifert um, unfortunately this is her last year uh, she is graduating early and had always planned to do so I'm assuming she made that clear to you early on not from yep. just in this year yep. it's got to be tough especially early on um, you were searching for answers at goal in your career here and then Courtney comes in Obviously, she needs to do what's best for her um, and graduate early and move on to the next step in her life. But is it disappointing to you at all that she's going to be taking that path? And you would hope, obviously, to have her for a fourth year. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to keep her for a fourth year, um, selfishly. But I know that it's going to help her future. And I know that she has worked really hard in the classroom to be able to get done in three years. So um, I've known for quite a while and I've supported her from day one on that. So. Of course, we're going to miss uh, miss her and hate to see her go so early when she does have time left, but um, completely understand on uh, on her end and where she sits. And um, so we've been able to proactively work um, with our coaching staff as well as bringing in other keepers that are going to help us next year without her. So um, she's definitely left big shoes to fill. Um, not only is she a great goalkeeper, but she's a great teammate, a great person. Um, she's a very, very strong individual, not only in the net, but in life. And I'm um, hoping that the girls... Uh, you know, when she does end up graduating, they can take some of those lessons and attributes that she brings and put them into life here, too. Now, of course, you get her for three years. The one that's got a little short, more of the short end of the stick is new softball coach Brett Shimmick. She will be actually graduating. Is, will she technically be graduating a year and a half early? Is that how that works out? She will finish up this the rest of this year. So she will go through this. Oh, she is season. going through the I semester. I believe so, Okay, Because yep. I thought somewhere I heard she wasn't going to play softball. Maybe that's just something for her major or something yeah, like that. But she's also be. the starting center fielder yep. for the softball team, which talks about her athletic ability. Yep. Um, now, Courtney is one of a number of players from Johnstown area, the uh, Cambria County area, Somerset County area, a place that you guys, meaning you and your husband, assistant coach Brad Heatheis, uh, it's been pretty fruitful for you. How did you first get into that area, and is there anything about players from that part of the state that 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 kind of links them all together, that they all share, that you like? Um, I would say overall they're quality people. Um, that's what kind of drew us to that area to start. Um, you know, I think, I want to say Tegan Jenner might have been one of, the, one of the first ones that we were talking to from that area, and 
kind of building those relationships. We built relationships among um, her mutual friends and uh, different teams in the area because we were obviously pretty new to the area, didn't know much about soccer in that, uh, that part of Pennsylvania yet. So um, able to be pinpointed in directions of uh, what schools are good to look at, where we should keep an eye on, um, what girls are, are doing really well in, in high school and could take that next step into the college level. So um, we were able to look at Richland and Bedford and um, obviously Somerset and kind of find that pocket of girls that are not only good soccer players but good people and obviously match up with their major here. Now, uh, my wife is from that area. She's from around North Star High School and um, Stoystown and, and Hoversville, you know, big sprawling metropolises like that. Um, but I have learned from her that soccer seems to be pretty popular at a young age in the players around there. Does that help to counteract the fact there's not a lot of large programs there? I mean, uh, you know, Richland's not a bad-sized school, but it's not a huge school either. Same with Somerset. There's no uh, North Allegheny. There's no um, places like that around that area. How important is the youth program up there? Do you see that as a, a possible reason why soccer is pretty popular and successful up there? Yeah, I think so. I think you could label a lot of those girls from that area as blue-collar hard workers. Um, so they've grown up at the youth level playing and playing every minute. Um, so that's a, a big thing for us, too, is they've played so much in high school and in clubs. They're traveling for club and being able to play um, and just play pickup. I think that's a, a huge thing that we don't see enough of these days. But I think that girls in that area really kind of um, gel together because of soccer and athletics. Um, so you can see that there's girls that are willing to try things differently or understand the game differently. Um, so that's, that's a good thing for us to look at. 11:37 here on 99.5 The Hive, your home for everything Waynesburg. Uh, now the scoring for Waynesburg has not been terrible by any stretch, um, even though coming off a 0-0 uh, double overtime tie. Are you comfortable with the fact that your team is not putting up three and four goals at a regular pace as long as the defense is playing solid? Is that a pay is that a style you like to play, or do you think there's more potential in this offense that maybe the goals are going to start to come, even though? And to be fair, you are playing good non-conference competition as well. Yeah, I think uh, defensively we are very solid, but we do need to grow in the attack. Um, and that's not just from forwards, that's midfielders, that's our outside backs that get up into the attack as well. Um, I think plain and simple, we're not shooting enough. Uh, we got to get get to the point where we're not waiting for that perfect opportunity. we got to take our half chances when we get them. Um, so I think that will be something we... Uh, continue to practice and look for moving forward because I think uh, when you look at any of the box scores that we've had, we haven't put up uh, maybe aside from one, two, three games maybe, uh, we haven't put up as, much, as many shots as the opposing team. Now we might have won a game, tied a game, whatever, uh, but we do need to take more chances and be a little bit more selfish in the, in the final third. Now one of the players who has had some off offensive success this year is Emily Hill, leads the team in goals with three, has an assist for seven points. Uh, Joe Moyer also multiple goals. You are get at least one thing. It looks like you are getting balance w from the scoring, from the scoring that you are getting. Along with those two, five other players have scored goals. Um, again, is that something that you like to see? Is there is some balance? There are a lot of players getting touches, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, a girl like Emily Hill, who uh, is a threat in the attack for us, other teams are going to know about that. So if they're paying extra attention to Emily, then somebody else is going to be open, and the opportunity will open up. So. Um, everybody's got to be ready and willing to take the chance when they get it. Um, just so happens that M. Hill and, and Jill have been connecting on their opportunities so far, but there has been other girls that have been in the mix and getting those shots. Uh, now we just got to have that confidence to, you know, put that ball in frame and just hit it like we mean it. Now, combination of that very solid defense and the scoring that you have gotten has resulted in this 4-1-2 and two record. And before even drawing this tie with Pitt Greensburg again a solid non-conference opponent who actually beat the only team that defeated you they beat Muskingum three nothing um you got in the regional rankings um as far as I know first time in a while I can't say for sure last time it happened but for the United Soccer Coaches putting you 10th in the Great Lakes region your thoughts on that and how has the team reacted to that news um to be honest, I'm not sure if everybody on the team knows about it. It's not something that we talk about. Um, is it awesome for the program and for Waynesburg? Absolutely. Um, the girls have worked hard and they're, they're earning it, but it's not something that we can rest upon. Um, so we don't focus on anything like that. We just let things come our way that come our way, but we got to make sure that we're working hard because 
we are playing good teams, and we got one more game tomorrow against Baldwin Wallace. That's non-conference that we got to do some work in, and then come next Saturday on the 29th, we start our first uh, home PAC opener. So we got to be ready for that. Guess I got to do a better job of getting the news out then, if not even the team knows that much about it. <laughs> um, let's talk about the PAC coming up. You start with St. Vincent at home, and then you go on the road against another. Uh, regionally ranked team, correct, in Westminster, who I believe is ninth. So yep. should be a good, certainly a good road test early in the PAC schedule on October 3rd. I want to ask you your opinion on this because a lot of coaches don't put much weight into this. And I'm going to talk about the game against Mount Aloysius. You go in, you get a 2-2 tie. Uh, very tough team in the Mounties. They were 6-0 and coming into that game. I believe their previous four games were against PAC opponents, and they beat them all. Yep. Um, as a coach, I know you probably don't take much stock in that. Has there been any talk through the players, the fact that this is a team that is consistently, and I think they shut out all but one of them, except maybe Bethany. Is that Was that any sort of a confidence boost for the players or anyone like that to know that they played a 2-2 tie with a team that just rolled through four PAC opponents? I think it might be, and I think it should be to a certain extent, um, but we can't take any of those pack teams lightly when we come up to play them. Um, but I think it did give us an idea of the talent level that they were at. Um, there's only so much film you can get from other teams to be able to watch prior to the games. Um, so I was able to watch a little bit of Mount um, prior to going to that game to get a little bit of a scouting report. They're a team that has three good pacey girls up top, but if you can slow them down and not let them turn and run at you, uh, then we're going to have a chance to play. Um, so I think that's one thing that we do really well is we'll settle the ball and we'll play an attractive style of soccer. Um, it's not a kick and run game for us. Um, sometimes it's harder to build up the, the play and be able to create those opportunities, uh, but we're going to stick firm on who we, wa- who we are as a program and um, the style of play that we want to play and just make sure that we're demanding that. If we can and we can control that, then uh, you know, I think there's, there's big things to come in the pack. We just got to stay ready and hungry. Now, before we get to PAC play, which I do want to do because that will be coming up next Saturday here at John F. Wiley Stadium, doubleheader against St. Vincent. Let's talk about Baldwin-Wallace a little bit, the the yellow battle of the Yellow Jackets tomorrow, 1 o'clock, starting with your women's team. Tell us about Baldwin-Wallace. What do they do? What makes them dangerous? Any players to watch for? People can follow along on waynesburgsports.com. Can you give us a brief scouting report on Baldwin-Wallace? Uh, I've watched a little bit of film on them uh, so far. They've played a lot of quality opponents um, and have had some really good results. So they're going to be a really good side. They're going to be tough. Uh, I expect them to be really physical, and I expect them to be quick. Um, They're pretty good on the ball. They're technical. Um, With that being said, they do get strung out a little bit as far as, um, you know, know, the lines of the back line, the midfield, and the forwards. So if we're able to kind of – keep the field big when we have it, but keep the field small when we don't and defend together. We're going to have moments and opportunities. We just got to take them. Um, but I do expect them to come out, and I think it should be you know, the toughest opponent that we've seen yet. So just trying to wrap my head around this a little bit myself, is this more of a quality versus quantity approach you think you're going to have to deal with when it comes to offense? When you get the opportunity, you got to make the most out of it because there's not going to be that many? Correct, yep. Okay. Um, Baldwin Wallace coming out of the OAC. Um, again, you got to focus on your opponents. This is going to be your second OAC opponent with Muskingum. The OAC is known as a pretty solid conference in a lot of sports. Would you say the same as for women's soccer? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say many conferences in Ohio are, are pretty elite and pretty good. Um, it's just the, the style of play is a little bit different. Um, they really bring the physical side of the game. Let me ask you this, too, and I've asked several coaches about this. Um, a very broad look at things. When you look at Division Three sports overall, now that you've had, is this your fifth year here? Fifth year, yep. So you've had four full years and part of another, really part of two because you came in before you first. Division Three is kind of an interesting animal because obviously there's no scholarships. So talking with several of our coaches, um, they agree with me in geographically where you're located can have a big impact. Pennsylvania Division Three schools are a little bit behind the eight ball because there's so many scholarship programs in Pennsylvania, not just Division One with Pitt, Penn State, Temple, schools like that, but also when you look at division, a strong Division Two presence, mainly because of the Peace Act. 
Is it harder? Is it easy? Let me put it this way. Is it harder to recruit Division Three in Pennsylvania as opposed to, say, Ohio? Because there is a decent amount of scholarship presence in Ohio, but not as much as in Pennsylvania. Is, is that something that you're aware of? Or, and does that force you to be a little more creative? Or do you really not see that big of a difference? I think for for us, we don't see as, as big of a difference as maybe other sports do. Um, primarily, we look for girls from Pennsylvania. We haven't gotten into Ohio too much. Um, on the girls' side because we get a lot of interest from PA, from Virginia, New York, Maryland, and mm -hmm. I would say that's kind of where we stick to. Um, Ohio seems to be a little bit tougher to pull girls out of because of how good the conferences are. Um, they do get um, scooped up by teams, and it could be on a roster of up to 40 girls. So um, people want to stay a little bit closer to home for some reason there, but um, we'll, still, we'll still give it our best shot and go after them. But um, we've kind of found the pocket of, of girls and people that we love. So... Um, you know, we'll keep looking at it, but at the same time, we're not going to rest on, you know, waiting for somebody from there. Now I'm going to, do you think philosophically the OAC is a little different than some of the other conferences around it? Do you think there's a little bit more of an emphasis on athletics in not all of the schools, but in the majority of them? There and, might be. And I'm not saying that is a yeah. negative. However no. they run their institutions is how they run it. Sure, sure. There might be. I don't, honestly, I wouldn't know enough about it. Okay. Because it just seems to me from... Uh, obviously, you're focused on your team. I, yep. I see a little broader, but I can't focus in on as much. Yep. It seems like every time there's a non-conference schedule and you have an OAC, whether it's basketball, whether it's baseball, whether it's soccer, men's, it seems like the OAC opponents are always quality opponents. So yeah. I wanted to kind of get your insight on that. Yeah. So you're going to wrap up non-conference play on Saturday, and then you get ready for kind of the, the big dance with the PAC schedule. We start with St. Vincent. Obviously... I'm guessing you haven't had much time to study the Bearcats just yet because you've had a lot of quality opposition already. Just from last year and from what you've seen, maybe from what you've heard, um, how do you see St. Vincent as a first test in the, for, the PA, for your PAC schedule this year? Uh, they'll be a good team. They've got, so far from what I've seen, a little bit of them just uh, with scouting them as in opponents that we also play. Um, they've got a girl up top that can finish a ball. They've got a good center midfielder that's playing really well for them, uh, scoring goals as well. Um, so they will be tough. They will be a good uh, first game for us to come into the, the PAC. It'll be a home game for us, which we've been on the road for the last four. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be nice to be back here at Wiley and uh, be in front of our home crowd. Um, that will also be our fundraiser game. So we expect uh, there to be a good turnout of students and fans and uh, just families. So we are excited for the first opportunity, and I think that we'll be hungry and ready to go. And that is the night of Nets, correct? Yep. Do you want to give any information to anyone listening about Night of Nets and just what that is? Yeah, so the Night of Nets uh, goes to benefit uh, people in South Africa. Um, and basically every $6 that we raise will go to buy a bed net um, to fight against malaria and the mosquito-borne illness there. So um, that's kind of what we raise the money for. We're partnering not only with men's soccer, but also with volleyball. So volleyball follows us on our home Saturday game. The next Wednesday, they're home as well. So... Um, the co combined three programs will be selling T-shirts and raffle baskets at our home events um, to raise money for fighting that. Now, this is the second year for Night of Nets? Yes. How did you first find out about a program like this? Um, it's actually pretty common in West Michigan, where we're actually from. Okay. Um, so we're just trying to think of different ways. We did one fundraiser, and it had been for many, many years. Um, and you kind of want to freshen things up a little mm -hmm. bit and keep the excitement going. So... We thought we'd change it up, and we went with Night of Nets, and it's been a good turnout for us so far. Um, and we're hoping and expecting the same for this year. Okay. 11.49 on 99.5 The Hive, your home for everything Waynesburg. You're listening to The Coach's Corner with Waynesburg University women's soccer head coach, Laura Heatheis, also men's assistant coach, Laura Heatheis. We mentioned St. Vincent to lead it off, and then you hit the road to go to Westminster. Obviously, again, Westminster off to a solid start. Come back for Bethany. Bethany always seems like a team that no one thinks about, at least in the past few years. And then last year they go out and shock everybody and beat Thomas Moore. Uh, then you go to Teal, come home for Chatham on October 16th. You play back-to-back -back at Grove City and Geneva for October 20th and 24th. And then you wrap up with W&J for Senior Day on October 27th. We mentioned Thomas Moore. The Saints are gone. Um, I think as far as saying a clear favorite, they were and have been for some time. They're now gone. But you look at this PAC s schedule. Maybe in the past, maybe St. Vincent was seen as a little easier of a game. Don't know if you would agree with that or not. Uh, 
Teal is usually seen as an easy game, but I mean, they've had some pop in there as well. This is your fifth year, as you mentioned. Is this the most balanced with the of the, of the most balanced you've seen the PAC between the exit of Thomas Moore and then the other teams sort of elevating over the past couple of years? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it will be the most competitive season yet amongst the conference. Um, I know that you know there's a couple programs. W and J lost their leading, I think, top two leading scores. Mm-hmm. Um, so there will definitely be room for other teams to to earn that spot in, especially with uh, Thomas Moore out. Um, you know, focusing on us and what we got to do. There are teams that I think that we have the ability to beat, and we can't get tripped up on them. Um, I think that's something that has been um, affected us the last couple of years, and we, you know, we can't let it happen. The games that are winnable that we have to win, we have to win. Um, so I think we got to have that mentality and be hungry and um, not take any team lightly, depending on how, you know, other scores have gone with different matchups and this and that. Um, so we just got to be ready for each game and take it one game at a time. With that defense, seemingly, um, in, let's, call, let's use the term in mid-season form. Seems like it's playing very strong and has continued to play better, especially with the 0-0 tie at Pitt-Greensburg on their field. Um, how much more confidence does that give you going into what is going to be a, a truly got to be ready for every game type schedule in PAC? You've got that defense. Obviously, you can't just you can't get lazy about it, but it looks like the defense is where it needs to be, at least from the outside looking in. And then the offense, the plan is for them to start catching up. How gr- how good does it have you? How good does it let you and Brad and the rest of the staff feel knowing that all right, the defense is ready. Let's get the offense up to it. But how good does it feel to know you've got that in your pocket, for lack of a better term, coming into the conference schedule? I think the team defensively as a whole has been really good, and it will definitely give us confidence. Um, when you look at Muskingum, the game that we lost. Uh, defensively, we were strung out. We weren't playing well. Our midfield was not defending, and our forwards weren't defending. Um, so as much as our back line is really solid right now and doing a great job, we also have to expect that same defensive mindset from the midfielders and the forwards. Um, when you can have a, a team effort like that, which we've had the last game at UPG, then we will be able to shut teams out. Um, but if we are you know, letting only defenders defend, we're going to run into some trouble. And the same thing goes for now the attack is – you know, the ball starts in maybe in Courtney's hands. She's got to be able to deliver a good ball, whether it's rolling it out, throwing it out, punting it. Mm-hmm. Um, our defenders, our outside backs that we like to get up in the attack, have to be comfortable with the ball and make a good decision on the ball. Um, so it's not just, you know, the forwards that aren't scoring goals. Maybe it's the balls into the forwards that aren't getting there or the midfield is too strung out that we can't switch the field. Um, so there's a lot of pieces that go into it. Um, What we need to have and what we need to see, especially come Saturday for the first conference game and as well as tomorrow, is a full team effort defensively and a full team effort offensively. Um, And I think the girls know that there has been a lot of different players playing different minutes and getting into the game and making an impact, and they just got to be ready for that moment, whether that is in the starting 11 or you're coming in after 20-some minutes. Just about to wrap things up here on the Coach's Corner. It's 11.54 on 99.5 The Hive, your home for everything Waynesburg, joined by Waynesburg University head women's coach and assistant men's coach, Laura Heatheis. Uh, programming note as well, starting next Saturday with the home opener against St. Vincent, the plan is to have Waynesburg University soccer on 99.5 The Hive. Um, we're still getting some technical things ironed out. It could actually be through green sports. If that is the case, it will still be found on Waynesburg Sports. Dot com. So if you want to check in with how the Yellow Jackets are doing uh, and listen live, certainly do so. And the plan is for every home PAC match, uh, there should be some audio coverage. So that is the plan. And, of course, you can follow live video and live stats on waynesburgsports.com. Coach, uh, any further thoughts on the year so far? As you mentioned, it's got to be good to see this four-game road trip coming to an end. Uh, with this game tomorrow at Baldwin Wallace. Just any other thoughts before we wrap stuff up? No, I think uh, we got one more to do tomorrow, and then hopefully we can see a lot of people out at the game on Saturday. All right, thank you very much, Laura, for joining us. I know you got a lot to get ready for before the road trip tomorrow, so best of luck. Thank you very much. Laura Heatheis joining us on the Coach's Corner on 99.5 The Hive, your home for everything Waynesburg. I'm Bobby Fox flying solo today. Thank you very much for checking in.